Hi there. My name is Maya. I'm a junior at MIT. I study computer science and mathematics. And in my free time, I like to sing and make music with my friends. Today, we're going to be learning how to make your own version of a calculator using Python. Let's see what an example version of this project looks like. So when I, won the pro when I run the program, you'll see the first thing that happens is the calculator asks us to enter a number or type stop to turn off the calculator. Let me start by just typing 17. Then it asks us for an operation. I'll use plus for right now. It asks us then for another number. After I'm done typing all the information, you'll see it prints out the equation that we typed in along with the solution to the math problem. After that, it asks us again to enter a number or to type stop to turn off the calculator. So this time I'll do the number 15. So I could do plus again for my operation. I could do minus, times, divides, or mod, which looks like a percent sign, but is actually more like a remainder function. What I mean by that is if I do 15 mod four, I'm going to get three because 15 divided by four has a remainder of three. So now that we kind of have an idea of how this works, I could keep typing operations over and over again until I decide to hit stop. Now you might be wondering what happens if I type something that's not a valid number. You'll see that the program yells at us and it tells us that it's not a valid number. So that's something that we're going to want to work into our program too. What happens if I type in an okay number, but something that's not an operation? You'll see it tells us that it's not a valid operation. So now the last thing that we want to do is try testing out a foggy second number. Again, it yells at us and it says that it's not a valid number. So all of those things are things we want to keep in mind as we're writing the program. Now, finally, if I type in stop to turn off the calculator, you'll notice that the whole program ends. This is what we're going to be trying to make together today. The first thing you might have noticed from our program is that if I didn't type stop, I technically could have kept doing calculations forever. So that means that we're probably going to want to use a while true loop, which is a loop that will essentially run until we tell it to stop using the word break. Now that we have the while true loop, I'm just going to print out that nice little line we saw at the beginning to keep things looking organized. Um, I'll put a bunch of dashes and then maybe a new line character at the beginning and the end. The new line is just a backslash n and it represents a new line in text. So when we print it out, you'll see that there's an extra space at the beginning of the end. It just keeps things looking pretty. Now that we've done that, we want to ask the user to enter the number or the word stop. So I'm going to store the user's input in a variable, and we'll get their input using the input function. So I might write enter a number or type stop to turn off the calculator. So now that we have the input, the first thing that we want to do is check to see if the user actually typed stop. So I can do that using an if statement or a conditional. So I'll write if input one is equal to stop. This is when we can use the word break to end our loop. Now the next thing is if you remember, the user might be malicious and they might want to type something in that's not a number. So we want to make sure that we're checking to see if what they type in is a number or not. And if it isn't a number, we want to tell them that it's not correct. So I'm going to write an ALIF statement that checks to see if the input isn't a digit. I can do that by using the isDigit function, which basically checks to see if a string represents a number. So if the input one isn't a digit, I want to print out that that is not a valid number. Now you might have noticed that 
in the example program, after we told them it's not a valid number, it just immediately jumped to the top of the loop again, right? It asked them for another number. So in order to do that in our code, we can use a special word called continue. That'll just skip everything underneath it in the loop and go back up to the beginning, which is what we want. So now, if we put an else statement, we know that everything inside this else statement isn't gonna be stop and it is gonna be a number. So we can use another variable to store their input converted into an actual number. Why do we have to convert it? Well, it's because whenever we use input, we're always going to get a string, even if that string contains a number. So in order to actually do math with it, we have to convert it into an integer. Now that we've gotten the first number, I'm going to ask the user to enter their operation using input again. So I'll list all of the options, just like we did in the original. Okay. Now we're going to ask them to enter their second number. And we'll do a really similar thing to what we did before. So again, we'll use input, we'll tell them to enter a number. And this time we don't need to check to see if it's stop because that's not an option for the user, but we still want to see if the input is not a digit because that's something that they could potentially do here for the second number. So if it's not a digit, again, we wanna tell them that that is not a valid number. And we're going to want to use continue again to jump up to the top of the loop. So now if it is a number, again, we can store it in another variable converted into an in integer so that we can actually use it to do some math. But so now that we have our two numbers, we're going to want to actually calculate the answer. But because op is technically a string and not a real plus sign or minus sign or et cetera, we're going to want to use a series of if statements to try and see which operation we're actually going to be using. So for example, I want to check to see if op is equal to a sign as a string. And if it is, I'm going to make a variable answer equal to number one plus number two, right? Remember, that's where we stored our numbers. So now if op isn't a plus sign, now I want to check to see if it might be a minus sign. So again, I can say answer is going to be equal to number one minus number two. And we can keep doing this for the rest of the operations until we've done it for every single operation. Number one times. So now that we've done all of the different operations, the last thing we want to do is handle the situation where they might have typed in an operation that's not valid, right? So we can use an else statement, right? Because if it's not any of the above options, then it's going to go into our else. So if it's an else, we want to print out that this is not a valid operation. And just like before, we'll use continue to jump back up to the top of the loop. So finally, now that we have our numbers, our operation, and our answer, we can print out the equation for them using a print statement. So I can say number one, operation, number two, an equal sign, and then my answer. Just a reminder, if we use commas inside of a print statement, it'll automatically put in the spaces for us. So the formatting will stay nice. Good. Let's run this and see how it works so far. Okay. I'll type in 18. We'll do times 5. Nice. That looks really good. 18 times 5 is 90. So at least the math is right. Let's see what happens if I type in something that's not a word or not a number. Perfect, it told us that it's not a valid number and didn't try to do any of the actual math. 
what happens if my first thing is correct, but it's not a valid operation? Perfect, it tells us that it's not valid. And let's try the last possibility where I do a valid operation, but my last thing is actually a word. Perfect, it tells us that it's not a valid number. So we can try maybe one or two operations just to make sure we didn't mess anything else up. Oh, I always forget to type them on separate lines. It's good to see that that's working though. Perfect, addition still works. And let's see what happens once we stop our calculator. Great, the program ends. Well, I hope you learned something today. I had fun making this and I hope that you did too. 